Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. This video is gonna be a little bit different, a little bit fun. We're gonna go with an overrated versus underrated on some fitness trends. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to start us off, we have Peloton bikes. And for this one, I'm gonna have to go overrated. Not a lot of people know about bike trainers, but you can actually get a bike trainer and use a real bike on that bike trainer, use Zwift, uh, watch some Netflix, something like that. So for me, I'm gonna go with overrated. I'd rather be on a real bike. Peloton might work okay for some people, but for me, a little bit overpriced and overrated. Moving on to barefoot shoes, and this one I'm actually gonna say is properly rated. I think for a while this was overrated, but in my opinion, this has shifted back to properly rated. For running, I would say barefoot shoes are probably still a little bit overrated. Uh, for most people, they're gonna benefit from some amount of a heel drop and a little bit of a cushion, especially for distance running. Um, some people, of course, can adapt to a barefoot shoe if you choose to, but I don't think it's really necessary for most runners unless you really want to, and you're probably not gonna perform optimally on a barefoot shoe compared to something with a little bit of cushion, especially for a distance race. That said, for everyday life, day-to-day -day things, I think it's great to be in a barefoot shoe a little bit more often, give your toes some room, uh, and let your foot be healthy that way. So I do think it's properly rated overall. All right, next we have intermittent fasting, and I know that someone's gonna go into the comment section and drop a research study or something like that that shows that intermittent fasting is so great, but the overall body of evidence shows that isocaloric, isonitrogenous studies with timed out feeding windows are just as effective for body composition change, improving lean body mass, and other metrics. Certainly there probably are some populations that may benefit from intermittent fasting, specifically if it helps you adhere to a calorie restriction, but that said, I think that intermittent fasting overall is a bit overrated. All right, next we have marsupials, and marsupials are honestly an underrated category. This one I would say is severely underrated. Very cute, have a pouch, incredible to look at, uh, great animals overall, very underrated. Moving on, we have functional training, and this one barely tips the scale at underrated. So functional training, I think for a while was overrated, and people definitely did take it too far with BOSU balls and balancing acts and stuff like that, but I think marches, step ups, exercises that are functional for the core full body are underrated and underutilized in programs. A little bit too much bodybuilding going on when we're thinking about the general health of the general population, runners, athletes. I think functional training does have a place. All right, and then lastly, we have a fun graph here. So things that are actually dumb versus sound dumb. So what we see on the bottom corner of this is the things that are actually dumb and sound dumb. So dumbbell punches, kind of dumb. The gravity is working down and the punch is going out. So you're really just working the top of your shoulder. Probably not a great exercise for stability or strength. Don't like that one. Training masks, sound dumb, actually dumb. Restricting your oxygen is not very beneficial for improving your overall health. Uh, you actually wanna get a lot of oxygen in and use that to train. There are, of course, some studies on training masks that have some respiratory marker improvements, but really respiratory markers are not the limiting factor in our fitness, and for most athletes, we're gonna benefit from actually in taking oxygen. And Fit T cleanses are the farthest to our sound dumb and actually dumb category. In the category of sound smart but is actually dumb, we have things such as the fat burning zone as well as spot reduction of fat. So you may know from my videos on beta oxidation and lipolysis that fat burning is a full body process and we cannot in fact spot reduce fat. There actually is a small amount of evidence that using an abdominal wrap around the abdominal region may locally heat that tissue and may cause a very slight amount of spot reduction of fat. But I think for most people, this is a lost cause and we really need to focus on the overall calorie balance and more important things like consistent protein intake and uh, things like that. Two more interesting categories though, we have sound smart, actually smart, and topping that list is progressive overload and dynamic warmups. Sound smart, progressive overloading, we're just slowly overloading the tissues with some periodization strategy there, great idea. Dynamic warmups have been shown to be really effective as well. And then some interesting ones here with the sounds dumb, actually smart, deadlifts to reduce back pain. Now this isn't always the best strategy. Acutely, you may have to take some time to rest and then again, progressively overload back, but deadlifts can help chronic or acute lower back pain and building up that region is very beneficial. And then lastly, we have blood flow restriction training, which I may have actually put as overrated, but it is effective. It sounds dumb. Why would we restrict blood flow to the area? But there are some beneficial metabolic processes that do support blood flow restriction training, especially in certain injury cases. So we will say that that one is sounds dumb, but actually smart. All right, guys, hopefully this was entertaining and a little bit informative for you guys. If it was, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at The Movement System, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.
Thanks.